Hi everybody. Uh, in this video I'm going to be tying a variation of the Wooly Bugger. I'll get to that variation in a second. Uh, the Wooly Bugger is a really all-purpose fly. It was first tied in Pennsylvania approximately 40 years ago. Uh, it, has, it pays homage to a fly known as the Wooly Worm, which has ties to um, Great Britain. Uh, which is a very popular fly in its own in its own way, but the woolly bugger really has taken over the sport in the last 20 years. Um, there have been many variations of this fly tide. I think most fly tires, including myself, tie different versions of it all the time for different species. I use it primarily for steelhead and for trout. Uh, I use it quite a bit. It's definitely one of my go-to flies. Um, but I recently was reading this magazine. I'll give you a little close-up of this. Um, it's called the Fly Fishing Guide. This is one of those magazines, um, I know most of us get a lot of magazines, but this is one that, that uh, we get for free in some of the fly shops in our area. And I always look forward to this, this fly fishing guide. It has articles all the time by Greg Hoover that are really great, um, Eric Straup, um, a guide out in central Pennsylvania, and there was one in particular by Lefty Cray in this May 2012 issue. Uh, Lefty Cray was talking about having this, this battery of flies that you can pretty much take anywhere and catch trout with. And he mentioned the woolly bugger. Nothing special except he went on to talk about having a body tied with peacock. And that's something I know a lot of my friends and, and I, uh, we don't have. We don't have that fly tied specifically with a peacock body. So I decided to tie some earlier this year and during the month of June caught a lot of trout on that fly. Uh, so for you today I'm going to tie the woolly bugger with the var variation being that it's going to be tied with a, a peacock body. I uh, hope you enjoy watching all the instructions. Um, again, after watching the video, if you have any comments or feedback for me, please feel free to leave it on the site. Thanks. Here's the finished uh, woolly bugger. If you take a look at this fly, you'll notice a few things. Uh, first of all, there's some crystal flash in this marabou tail. I'm using an olive hackle. There's a peacock body, and if you look really close, you'll see that there's wire um, intertwined with the hackle and with the peacock. Uh, I'm going to tie this fly now. I'm going to go over the instructions on how to do that. But this is a copy of the finished fly. All right, let's get started tying this fly. I'm going to be using a curved nymph hook, size 10. Uh, this is a great hook. My Uncle John turned me on to these hooks um, years ago. Uh, it's a 3X long hook. Uh, it's, this, it's got a really neat bend to it that really helps uh, whenever you're tying streamers onto it. In this case, the brand that I'm using is Orvis, but there's many uh, companies out there that make this curved nymph hook. I'm going to pitch down the barb first to make sure the, um, the hook tempering is okay. Seems like it is. Let me get this back into my vise. Um, this is a great fly that you can tie with bead heads. You can use cone head. You can put eyes on it. In this case, I'm not going to use any of that. I'm just going to be using um, 0 0.015 lead wire for the body. So let me get that tied on first. I'm going to put that on without any thread. I'm going to start it around the halfway point of the, the fly, work it up towards the eye, get that off of there. There's a little bit of tag that's, that's hanging on. I'm going to spin it around a number of times. But I don't, want to, I don't want this to go the whole way towards the back of the hook. I don't want it to cover the entire body of the fly. Um, I do want it to add weight to this fly. Uh, you want the woolly bugger you know, to the middle to, to bottom of the stream. And that's typically where you're going to use it to catch fish. But if I've noticed over the years that if you put this lead wire on the whole way to the back, it really builds up the body of this fly. So I really like, like to keep it primarily near the front of the, um, the, the front of the hook. It will allow this woolly bugger to kind of ride almost like a jig in a sense, which is not a bad thing at all. I'm going to tie on my thread. I'm just going to put a little bit of it um, near the eye of the hook, but I'm not going to build up the head at all. I'm going to go over this lead wire just a couple times to secure it in place, make sure it doesn't twist much when I'm tying all the other materials onto it. That's more than enough. Let me tie off my thread, or cut off my thread. Now I have the, the thread in place near the, the bend of the hook, pretty much above where, maybe one or two wraps above where that um, the point would have been, the, the barb. I'm going to first tie in some olive marabou for my tail. So here's a little plume of, or feather of olive marabou. Uh, has lots of action to it when it gets wet. I'm simply going to be using the tips of this feather. There are some other feathers on it that I might use for some other patterns, but in this case I'm just going to pretty much donate this whole entire feather 
towards this uh, wooly bugger. I'm going to grab it so I have the tips. I'm going to measure them to make sure they're about the length of the body. Hold them in my left hand above the thread. I'm going to wrap up once. Lock the thread in place. So if you notice, I'm moving the thread, but it's locked in place already. Go around this, pull. Let me secure this marabou. I'm going to make sure that that tail's about the right length that I want it. And it is. looks pretty good to me. Um, it's already secure. If you notice, when I'm moving everything that when I'm moving this the front part of the feather, I don't see the tail moving at all that way. That, that tells me it's secure. Whenever I cut though, I want to make sure I don't I don't cut it too far up. I want to keep it really close to the back. I'm going to pretty much cut it so it just gets cut directly above where that lead wire was stopped. I'm just going to put a few wraps over it just to cover it up for now. Ensure that it's locked into place. Now at this point, we can do a number of things. For this fly, I am going to use some crystal flash in the tail just to give it a little more uh, just something more for the fish to see. I'm using, it's made by Hairline Dubbing. Let me see if I can get this in the camera shot for you. Um, it's Crystal Flash Peacock Colored. So I figure that will kind of go with the body. It's got a lot of um, a lot of light to it. In this case, I'm only going to cut off just a few strands. I don't want to go too crazy with this stuff. The Wooly Bugger is a really effective pattern. We don't have to go nuts on using Crystal Flash. So I've just cut around a, we'll say a five inch, six inch piece of crystal flash. I really don't even need that much. To tie this in, there's a number of different ways, but because I just have three cut, I'm gonna put this around my thread and lock it in place near the top. Then I'm gonna let three go to one side, three come to the side facing the camera and tie them in place. So now I have a total of six, three on each side of that marabou. If you notice the three on this side are really trying to kick up, that's not going to be too big of a problem. I'll be able to put a couple wraps to ensure that they stay near the back. Because I really don't want them coming up over that, over the hackle or any other parts of the fly once I have everything else tied on. I'm going to trim them right now just so they don't get in my way. I'm going to trim them just so they're just a hair longer than, um, than that marabou. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see those a little closer up. So if you notice, I have my tail in. I have these trimmed, again, just so they're slightly longer than the marabou. Uh, next, I'm going to be tying in this stuff made by UTC. It's called Ultra Wire. It's chartreuse colored. It's going to allow me to add a little bit more weight, but also it's going to give me something else. Or it's going to give the fish something else to see whenever this flies in the water. So I have a little piece of it trimmed. I'm just going to lock this in place for now. Just a few wraps is all I'm going to need. And I'll talk more about that in a second. All right, next I'm going to add in some hackle. Um, the hackle that I'm going to be using is made by Metz in this case. It's a number two uh, saddle. It's dyed olive. Whenever I first began tying these woolly buggers, I thought the best hackle to use was this hackle on the sides. Uh, but I realized over the years that that, that hack one there is really, it's not, it's not really wavy. It doesn't, it doesn't give a lot of action in the water. So I've since started using more of the hackle that's found near the top that has a little bit more marabou in it. Um, it's a little webbier and the fish just really seem to, I think, I think they, uh, whenever they get this fly in their, their mouth, they hold on to it a little bit more because it's not as stiff as some of this lower hackle is. All right, let me zoom in on this hackle so you can see this. For this piece of hackle that I selected, you can see it's a, it's a really webby, hack, webby hackle near the bottom, um, not so much near the top. If I would tie it in here, the hackle fibers would probably be way too long, and that's really not a bad thing, but for the sake of this video, I am going to kind of trim it closer to the top so it doesn't look completely distorted. I'm going to trim the bottom part of this hackle off, pull some of these fibers off, get them out of there. and lock this hackle in place. So I have the hackle locked in place um, in front of the wire. I'm gonna add my body, which is gonna be uh, two peacock fibers from a peacock the eye. So I am taking these from the eye of the peacock. It seems like they're just a little bit 
there's a little bit more to them whenever you pull them from the eye. So I have those locked in place. I do have a rotary, um, a rotary vise, so I could just simply tie my thread off near the front um, and put it in a spindle and um, and spin my spin the peacock up and do the same with the hackle and possibly the wire. Because I'm, I'm I don't want to assume that everyone has it. I am simply going to just wrap this up. So I'm going to wrap the peacock first. I'm not going to spin them or do anything do anything special. I'm just going to keep the two together. If you notice, it's creating a really nice bushy body. And one snapped. Let's see if we can do this again. Got it up there that time. So I have the peacock up. I have it trimmed off. I'm going to pull the hackle up now. I'm going to palmer just a little bit at certain points. I just want to completely cover the, um, the peacock when I get near the front. Just going to put a couple wraps over that to lock that in place too. Let me trim my hackle. Okay, and last I have this um, this chartreuse uh, uniwire, this ultra wire. To put this on, I can't just simply start wrapping it or else it will hold all of those hackle fibers down. Now I'm using this to, to do a couple things. It will add a little bit of weight. It won't add a lot. It's nothing. It won't, wouldn't be anything significant, but it is still some weight. But I'm really using it to um, to hold the peacock in place because once uh, a couple fish, you know, hit this fly, that peacock is really easy to snap and it will break. If you notice, I'm wiggling this wire back and forth, and that's so it doesn't hold down any of those hackle fibers as I'm wrapping it up. I'm not sure if the camera's showing this, but you can see a little bit of light coming off this wire, which possibly could help to attract fish too. Getting it near the front, I'm going to try to bring it the whole way up as far as possible while not pushing any of the uh, hackle down. We're not going to need too many wraps to um, hold this wire in place. It's not really going to be going anywhere, but I'll put three wraps in there. Trim the wire, get that out of there. Now I know I have my peacock. Uh, it's being held down by the wire and by the hackle. That wire's holding down the hackle. Uh, everything looks okay on my tail. I'm just going to put a couple wraps up by the eye. I'll put a half inch. After the half, the half inch, I'm going to whip finish the, the um, whip finish the front of this. I'm just going to put three in there. Now. In the case this is a woolly bugger, I'm going to put a second whip finish. This may be overkill. I'm sure it is, but um, this is a fly that I that tends to run near the bottom and does get beat up quite a bit. And to ensure that nothing happens, I'm going to be using this stuff called hard head. It's a uh, head cement. I'm going to be putting it on just the front, directly behind the eye, just so I know that that thread is thoroughly locked in place and so I know nothing's going to happen to it. Just gonna put a little drop of it up there, and I'm gonna take a quick look at the fly. Um, it, based on where I have this camera, it always is kind of an awkward position. It's kind of tough to see everything that I'm doing on it. So I'm gonna trim down this, these uh, that crystal flash just a little bit more. I don't want them too long. So I'm gonna trim that down. Aside from that crystal flash, everything else in the fly pretty much has come out as I'd like it. Um, this is the finished woolly bugger with the variation being that it's the um, the peacock body. It's a great uh, great uh, fly to fish. Uh, hopefully you have a lot of fun fishing this fly. If you have any questions, any suggestions, or any comments, please feel free to leave them on this YouTube page. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the instructions to this woolly bugger.